All right. This is the Gut Geek sound check. This is Wolfie's sound check. Oh, boy. So, just so you know, in the exchange shop, when you reload, you can get an OG to go 7 Eleven Festival raid with a side of Cheerios that cleans virtually 100% of your mouth. Just don't get the tinsel. That's a pretty good deal. Not even going to lie. Uh, I pulled SSB Goku and SSB Vegeta. Let's go. I did it. Finally. Dragon Ball Legends, right? Yes. Because you're back. All right. Yes, Sound check done. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Get Geek Podcast, where we celebrate geek, nerd, and pop culture. Each week, we deliver the best analysis for fans, by fans, on anything related to movies, TV, video games, comics, anime, and manga. We talk geek. And now, here's the Get Geek Podcast. Hello, everyone. I am your host, Walt, and welcome to our listeners in the United States and around the world. This is the Get Geek Podcast. And I'm joined once again by our incredible, incredible group of geeks. Gentlemen, please introduce yourselves. This is Wolfie. AJ. Eli. And um, we are missing, we're four out of five today because we are missing our other host, our other geek, nerd, uh, whatever you want to person. person. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Jose is going to be on hiatus for a little while. He's got some things he's got to work out, um, some personal stuff, and, and we're happy for him. So we're going to hold down the fort until he gets back. Mm-hmm. Um, and on that note, I please, again, would like to ask you guys to rate, review, and subscribe to this awesome little podcast. Um, Do it. That's the best way that you guys can show appreciation for your favorite little podcast here. And it's a good way for us to get some feedback on what you guys like and what you guys don't. So please, when you're on uh, listening to this podcast, just hit that rate, review, and subscribe button and let us know how we're doing. Um, big news today. So today we're going to be talking about Hawkeye. We're going to be talking about Star Wars. But big news on the personal front because the Dojo NYC was competing in a tournament this past this weekend. And um, Gabe, why don't you tell us how awesome the Dojo did this weekend? <laughs> so um, for those of you guys that are new listeners, uh, I own a jujitsu school for which is how I met the Melgar family over here. Um, Everyone on this crew trains Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and uh, it's uh, it, it was nice. We had a tournament yesterday in uh, Connecticut. It was the uh, first time that we've competed since before the pandemic as a big group the way that we have. I've been competing for some time already, um, but uh, this is the first time that we have the group effort that I'm used to having, and um, we had 13 competitors, and we came wow. out with eight gold medals, four silver and six bronze medals. And, uh, hey. and it's, uh, it's, it, it's kind of a big deal for me because, you know, it's, uh, it's good as a morale boost for the mm-hmm. students, for the, for the academy to show that the stuff that we've been working on, uh, does work on a competition setting. Um, but it's, it's good for me to see the success of the students. You know, it's, uh, it's more important for me that they succeed than any, more so than anything else. And, uh, yeah. you know, anytime that I go to a tournament and of course, like winning isn't everything. I tell every single one of my students that the purpose isn't to win. It's to learn whether you win or you lose, mm-hmm. you'll always be a better martial artist because you're, you're, you're learning through the process of, you know, training competition and so on and so forth. Um, but it's always difficult for me to see a student not succeed and not execute. So it always hurts, you know. And so when I get a chance to see my students succeed and, and, and win and have their hand raised and all the adulation that they get from, like, all the training partners, the crew. We had such a big crew there that went to, to visit and spectate um, and cheer on that, uh, you know, like, that's 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 what I 
enjoy the most out of the entire experience. So, yeah, um, I was going to say, um, you know, it, it, it's got to be super enjoyable. You being a teacher and a coach to see that, you know, the techniques and, and, and the things that you're offering, even outside of jujitsu, is, is helping your students and stuff like that. I know, you know, personally, we get a lot out of it, you know, from from our perspective. But like I said, you as a teacher, seeing your students excel like this, that's got to be a great feeling. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's it's in a lot of ways, uh, maybe because I looked at my old instructors in martial arts growing up as father figures, I feel like all my students are almost like kids of mine. So, you know, I would imagine I don't have any kids, but I would imagine that it's um that it's it's akin to seeing you know your kid get a diploma or get your or your kid getting a certificate you know Absolutely. for whatever it is like it's just any achievement you know you're proud of and 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 uh, that's how I feel every time that I see any kind of successes even in a match that we might have lost you know if I see a student you know fight and uh, uh, execute techniques that we're training and so on and so those are, those are all successes to me so um, it's it's competition is always a a great opportunity for me to to see you know the advancement and for the student to to see that the stuff that they're doing is working so um yeah, yeah it's it, it was a great time yesterday well just just on a personal level um you know we've always been interested in getting eli into martial arts training and stuff and we struggled for a long time trying to find the right school i mean we've done what uh, Taekwondo and, you know, we've done, uh, what is Kung Fu and Tai Chi and stuff. And, yeah. you know, it, we were always interested in BJJ. We never could find the right school. We've gone to like a whole bunch of different ones and they all seemed like one of those McDojos and stuff <laughs> that you see, that you talk about where it's like, they're a diamond you know, dozen. They're a diamond yeah, dozen. Unfortunately, you know, it, you know, you take these quote unquote proficiency test before and they're like oh look how great he can kick how great he can punch he's got to be in this really yeah we we do a proficiency those. test yeah I, wow we, we did it with aj also aj took uh taekwondo way 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 long time ago and they had him kicking sheets i don't remember <laughs> you know they had him kicking away yeah they had him kicking little pieces of paper and stuff and said look, yeah. look how good he is so, you know, <laughs> wow, yeah, so that's it, amazing. It, 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 that's why we fell in love with the dojo because when we came in, we first of all, we felt very welcome, and yeah. second of all, we can see that the focus wasn't really on just you know, oh, let's getting in as much. The focus really was on teaching and stuff. So, um, anybody that's listening that's in Brooklyn, um, or Queens, or the New York City tri-state area you really got to check out the dojo nyc because it is a really good place to train and not only are you learning techniques but you're gaining friendships that's going to last you a lifetime so uh again please come out and check out the dojo nyc whenever you can check it out check all right all right so are we ready to nerd out to geek out hell yeah <clears throat> let's go all right, so obviously we already mentioned that we're going to be talking about Hawkeye as well as uh, some Star Wars discussion. Um, just going to jump right into Hawkeye. Uh, I will say that I did not see the third episode, but I will allow I will allow the spoilers because it is my fault. My plan was to watch it, but I did not realize that I had prior engagement on Thursday. Then I had my you know mom's sixtieth birthday celebration yes. on friday and then congrats. Congrats. happy so, birthday mom <laughs> and then i had a 14 hour shift uh at the tournament yesterday so i didn't ha did not have any time to watch the third episode can i, but can I, say I do one still real, want to discuss can I, it can i say one thing real quick sure the third episode is probably the best of all the all the episodes oh my so goodness are you serious yes uh, in my opinion so but, but let's talk about it. Let's talk about it, you know? Well, here's the thing, right? So, wait, do we know how many... Obviously, we, well, obviously someone here has to know how many episodes uh, uh, I believe Hawkeye it's only is. six. So, we're already... It's only here. six? Yeah. No way it's only six. It's a limited series. So... Why, does, why do they keep doing this? They, like... It's I just, know. Oh, and it's, it's, they make every every new show is like, oh, less episodes than the previous one. Spoiler alert! It's so good, and and you you kind of 
I had the realization we're halfway through the show. It kind of makes sense because it's set what God. around Christmas time, so it's it's literally going to end. I right guess it's going to end on Christmas. Time, right? yeah, that, that's kind of cool. Yeah, that's kind of cool. You know, yeah, I like yeah. that. I do. I, I'll admit that I do kind of like the idea of a show that kind of happens that starts on Thanksgiving, ends on Christmas. It's kind of cool. It's like yeah. going to be kind of like I hope it's kind of something that they do moving forward. But like a, um, like a holiday tradition. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so why don't we quickly start with just quick impressions? I really want to know like what you guys think so far. The first three episodes, without going into any details yet, because we'll discuss what's oh, going on. But I want to know what your your quick first takes. I, I just want to say, like, for my first two episodes, I, I, I quickly forgot that this is a uh, a a weekly release series. So I'm like watching. I see the first episode, then I see the second episode, and it was kind of late. So I'm like, ah, oh, cool. Like you know, next day I'll catch up on it. I get like my lunch ready. I'm one of those guys that like I, I kind of plan my viewing and all that. So I like prepared a really dope like lunch, and I sat down and I t- and I was like, okay, I'm not gonna eat. I'm not gonna take my first bite until I get my TV ready. And then I go to to to, to Disney Plus, and I'm like uh, continue looking at the continue watching list. I'm like, oh, Hawkeye's not there. What's what's going on? And I, so then I'm like, oh, Disney Plus, the app sucks. I'm gonna go to the the, the, the Hawkeye actual you know tab, mm-hmm. and I go there, and I'm looking for the third episode, and I'm like, oh, it's not God, there. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. not there. <laughs> so my first impressions yeah. are really good. I think I think the show so far works. I like uh, I like the banter. I like uh, the costume design. I I, I I have read Hawkeye sporadically over the years, and and uh, especially on the the more recent ones uh, when Annie Wu was uh, illustrating it as well. Um, the uh, so far it's it's kind of true to the look and feel of the comic book. It's literally you know Clint Barton is just trying to be a normal dude, and just crap happens around him. You know um, that pretty much so, sums up the show. <laughs> And so that that's the feeling that I get, and I love it because I love it when they stay true to the soul of the comic, not necessarily just you know the look of the comic, Mm -hmm. you know. So that's that's how it is. Cowboy Bebop. I'm looking at you. That's the opposite, right? They want to look like the the, the, they want to look like it, but not have its soul. Anyway, that's a you know we've already had that discussion. Yes. What about you guys? What, what do you guys think so far? The first three episodes. Again, let's not spoil anything yet. Um, but I just want quick, quick, quick takes, quick impressions. Three words: funny, engaging. I'll get back to you on that third word. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, uh, but, um, it's 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 pretty good so far. Uh, I'm enjoying it, uh, and I. Can't speak anymore because we're not talking about spoilers. Okay. <laughs> Eli? Uh, Go ahead, uh, Eli. Okay. Here comes the call. Oh, my goodness. Come yeah, on, Eli. Come on. Come on. No, no, no. Listen, 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 listen. It's the holidays, Eli. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's good, but, like, it's not good. <laughs> what? Yes. What? Okay. Are you kidding me? No, it's like funny and it has like sort of good action and stuff like, but like the story is kind of like bland, at least to me. Oh my goodness. Am I not wrong? Uh, You're absolutely yeah, wrong, but we'll yeah, talk, yeah, we'll we talk about how you see. No, I, I'm kind of I'm kind of leaning with everybody else. I'm I'm oh actually enjoying gosh. it. You've, you got a major, you've taken a major major dose of hateration lately. Oh you know, like no, everything whatever. everything is trash. That's know. how it's always been. Yeah, no, but no, like no, no, especially no, 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 no. No, lately. Forget, forget it. Forget it. You know, you go, you go. You go. That's okay. That's okay. Listen, <laughs> but it's just not good. Everybody has their own opinions. Which is, which oh is my goodness! Good. You know, it's just not good. All right, well. Uh, I'm going to follow that by saying I'm thoroughly enjoying the show. I think um, coming kind of some of the points that you mentioned, um, the banter between Kate Bishop and Clint Barton is just priceless. I mean, uh, Haley Stanfield is really killing it as Kate Bishop and stuff. And I like the way Jer- Jeremy Renner is approaching the character. He's kind of like he's got that deadpan delivery that just works perfectly well against what Haley Stanfield is trying to do there with her character. Um, it it kind of reminds me a lot of a lot of Murtaugh and um, 
uh, rigs in in terms of the lethal weapon series and stuff. Yeah, like that. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's like the, the the veteran that wants to like I just want to enjoy my exactly. holidays. Exactly. Yeah. Oh and wow. Funny yeah. enough, like you said, it's kind of like in the holiday season and one night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I, I distinctly get that whole lethal weapon type feel with this. Oh man, yeah. With the Panther yeah. and stuff. And like I said, the tracksuit mafia. Oh my gosh, those guys are so good. <laughs> yeah. Those guys are so good. You know, and it, it, you know what? It it feels it as 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 disconnected as it is. It still feels MCU type because you know, um, again, it it kind of follows the MCU formula of you know the banter and and the jokes and the dialogue and stuff like that. But it, there's also that seriousness where it's like Hawkeye just wants to have a normal life. He wants to retire in peace and stuff like that. And like you said, um, things just keep happening to him. And it's just he can't get away from it. You see. Well, you know what? We'll talk more about it in, in our discussion. But just to put a point, to, to put a button on it, uh, I'm having a blast with this show. I really, really am. So I, I, I want to go to Eli first. But just because I really want to understand why it's just not good. But before I go, it, there's one thing that I think that needs to be said. It's that let's not forget that this is a comic book show so mm -hmm. or a show based on comic books. And the, the, the way that comic books work and the reason that this still feels MCU is when you do it right, a comic book should feel like it's part of some larger story. Absolutely. That is involved in this Marvel universe, but not not that the story is about that larger story at all. And you have like a lot of tropes like the the tracksuit mafia is is kind of like the comedic element of, of you. You'll see that kind of stuff in comic books where like in the comic books is like this. This feels random, but it feels comic. You know, it's still a comic book, you know, and it's where it's being derived from. And you got to remember that that is the source material. And so if you're going to compare it to anything, you have to kind of compare it to its source material more so than anything else, right? You can't compare Lethal Weapon to, to let's say, Gladiator. These are two completely different, you know, worlds. So that Eli. being said, Eli, Eli, why is it just not good? <laughs> Eli. I've changed my mind. It's, no, it's, no, 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 no. Don't no. change wait, your wait, mind. No, no. If you no, if you I, have your, your opinion, don't be swayed okay, by anybody okay, else. Okay, it's okay, your okay, opinion. Okay, okay. What are you talking about? That's the whole point of, no, but of a debate. I've sort of changed my mind. I've sort of changed my mind. But okay. I will say what I was going to say earlier about it. And that it's very, I mean, it is what it is. It was a buddy cop. So, And to be honest, I have a problem with buddy cops considering they're all the same am i not wrong with this i mean i wouldn't say that they're all the same they are. but there is no, no no but there's certain like a buddy cop movie or show is still yeah it's gonna be a buddy cop movie just like a superhero film is like technically all superhero films are superhero films are all the same right it's you got the good guy the bad guy powers versus evil doers trying to destroy the world you could technically say that about almost any genre you have to kind of dial down on and decide whether is it a good buddy cop show or not. So okay, is so it? It's a good buddy cop show. There you yeah. go. But it's a buddy sometimes cop. we gotta help Eli understand how he feels about no, things. No, 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 no. It's a good buddy cop show, but it's also a buddy cop show. So I'm you saying just have an, you have an issue with buddy you just don't like yeah, yeah you just don't like buddy cop shows. Do. All right, I do. well be a little bit objective. Dang it. Yep. So so what what don't you like about what don't you like about uh buddy cop shows? Well, I, I already said they're like all the same. And that's I know it? that's uh, yeah, because it doesn't feel like original, like the plot of the story and how it all goes. It's usually two people versus one huge organi organization. Am I not wrong there? Well, yeah, but <laughs> what's the difference? Uh, what's it what's the, so so technically is every superhero film a buddy cop? If it just if, if they did it. oh wait wait hold on so if, if like Batman and Robin have like a film is that a buddy cop? No. <laughs> All right. I, yeah, I, I think I think is. what what Eli's trying to hit on is is the buddy cop in terms of a comedy type of thing. Yeah. And I think All right. That's what he's nah, it, it, it's cool. I mean, so, you know, if it's not no. your cup of tea, it's not your cup of tea. What? Like buddy cop as a comedy. 
where it's like they're they're landing the same type of jokes and no, the same. I'm just as, talking about the story in general. Okay. All right. The plot. I, I just don't like it. Okay. Although I do like my boy. What's his name? Who's that? Jesus Christ, I forgot his name. Mexican <laughs> Joker. Oh, uh, Mexican Jack. Joker. Is it Jack? Yeah. Is that in the third episode? Jack, I believe. No, oh, he's in the, just, in the first episode. Yeah, he's in the first right episode. Right yeah, yeah, he's the he's the fiance to. Um, oh, right, 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 right. He was in Mexican Breaking Bad, Joker. the Mexican Joker, as uh, as we affectionately call bad. him. No, I mean, no, no, yeah, better call Saul. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He does kind of like. I still don't know him very well, but very clearly, he's the bad guy. Bro, you know? he has a huge part. In episode three, we 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 get to see a little bit more. Well, again, I want you. You guys can you know spoiler alert. If you guys haven't seen it, you guys can no, step away. What happened was she tried. Oh, in episode, episode two. Episode two. Yeah, yeah, he was in episode two. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, it doesn't matter. He's he's your favorite he's just, character. Yeah, he's he's got me. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! There you go. What about you, AJ? Um. So, like I said, I'm I'm enjoying the show pretty well so far. Uh, I'm gonna echo what Walt said. I like the interplay between um, Kate Bishop and Hawkeye. Um, <laughs> god, Hawkeye is just. <laughs> Probably one of the best parts of the series so far is when he goes to the LARPing convention. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> that oh my god, that was just so good. Oh. That was so good. He I love that he want, had to like act everything out. <laughs> he didn't want anything to do with it, but at the same time, deep down, and even the guy said it, you know he enjoyed it a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he definitely yeah. did. It, like, that, it was that, no scene, that scene had to be super fun when they were shooting it. But it was kind of yeah. loaded, too, because if you actually think about it, what it represents to Clint is kind of a traumatic part of his life because – Whenever he uses a sword, the only thing he can probably think of is when he was Ronin. So while he enjoyed it, he still had that overshadowing, like, uh, you know, that experience in his life where he was like, <coughs> the lowest point. Yeah. And that was kind of, it was kind of cool how they kind of played with those two elements in that yeah. sequence. Well well, it's funny that you bring that up because one thing that I wanted to talk about was a kind of like a connection that I see with uh, Clint, his character, and what I have experienced with like people in the military and law enforcement that I've dealt with um, in the past. Where something like, for example, when they were at the uh, the the Broadway show, the Avengers Broadway show, essentially, you know, oh and despite God. like how like they're telling the story. Which is funny, right? Because I think that's how it was meant to look. It was meant to look really cheesy. Yeah. Um, but Clint says that's not how it happened. And this is part of a larger story that, like, you know, people that, like, have gone to the military, right, that, that, that have gone to war, they go to war, and then they come back, and everyone is, you know, great adulation for them. You know, thank you for their, your service, the whole nine. But they kind of don't want that. They, don't, they just want to have a, a normal life. But then when they see war movies or things in media, the first thing that I hear a lot of times, like, that's not how it happened. You know, they weren't there, you know, and, and I see like there's kind of something that like that Clint is, is dealing with on the uh, on a societal standpoint where like it, <clears throat> maybe he doesn't feel like he he fits into society right now because they didn't go through what he went through. He's dealing with PTSD. Yeah. And that's something that we're seeing you know, as a layer under all the comedy and everything that's going on. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's really, that's so far, that's my favorite aspect of the show is I want to see this being explored as far as like him dealing with his PTSD while trying to live a, a normal life in society. And, and you see a lot of that in some of those scenes because, you know, um, and I believe it was in either the first or the second episode where he just wants to be left alone. You know, he he really doesn't want any of the adulation. He doesn't he doesn't want to be recognized. He just wants to be yeah. out and about. Yeah. You know, and I, he had that scene with his family and I believe the Asian restaurant, right? Yeah, where where it's like right. I, I'm just here having you know dinner with my family, and then the waiter comes up and he's like, "Oh, don't worry, you know." 
it's on us, you know. And he's like, I don't, I don't want that from you. Yes, yes. I just want, I want you to treat me like a normal person that's just walking around having dinner with my family. So there is a lot of that in that show, you know. He just doesn't care to be, and even, you know, Kate Bishop. He's always she's always talking about you have a problem with your branding, right? And yeah, like, I right. I don't want that. I yeah. know. And she she even has that great little thing where it's like, let's let's do you this costume. <laughs> let's put it purple. You know, and it's the classic Hawkeye. Oh, costume. this happens in the third the third episode? Oh, I guess I guess it does then, you know. Yeah. Um Oh, yeah, I can't wait to see it. I'm gonna check it out today for oh, sure, man. Great oh, that's awesome. He looks at it and he's like, That's trash. Come on, break, you know. Clint is Eli. <laughs> oh so, so it's so like like you said, it's it's so on point where you know we're talking yeah. about serious issues that's kind of underlaid under everything else and stuff like that. And it's, it's, it's they're it, on the surface and they're addressing it, but they're not making it like you know they're not they're not making it the story right necessarily exactly. yeah because then and that's it'd, something it'd be super depressing right <laughs> yeah and that's something that marvel has always been known for right spider-man x-men mm-hmm. you know when we saw loki you know uh it, it, they, they do a really good job of like hey like there's this really really serious topic that we want to kind of create dialogue for um right. and something for you guys to talk about but we still want to make sure that it's within this realm of like really good storytelling really good uh uh enjoyment and experience and you know screw martin scorsese if he doesn't think that they're good good stuff you know uh really? I, I don't or, see what, yeah. or 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 mobile phones right because isn't that the the new thing now with uh that movie the last duel yeah. Nobody went to go see it because everybody's watching their stuff on phones. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, and it's funny because I do, I do want to see Last really? Duel because I'm a huge fan. Wow! But uh, yeah, some great yeah. people in that in that movie. You know? Yeah. Um, but anyway, so yeah. can can we talk about can we talk about the the character that seems to be the antagonist also of the show, um, the character of Echo that's played by Aluqua Cox. Please tell me about it because I have not like I I did not see the third episode so okay. I do not well, know. Um, let me let me give you some background on the actress because it, it's fascinating. This oh. is her first acting gig ever. Ever she has mm. never been on a show. Really, before. she has never. Yeah, and and you know the fascinating thing is that her character is getting her own show after this. Really? No so, way. Yeah. So you know, she she is there. There is some. She's a Native American. She is actually deaf. She does have a prosthetic. She's an amputee, right? Um, and like I said, first acting gig ever. And you know, listening to her, well, you know, just hearing her story is just super inspiring. And you know, she does credit both stars for actually trying to learn ASL, American Sign Language to you know help the show go better i mean there are certain parts where they use it but just because she's on the set they made the effort to you know learn how to sign and stuff and and kudos to her man because she is she that's is amazing a, she's a that's presence yeah. and she's a presence on 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 the show she, she really is um you know some of the scenes with her are just incredible and to know that this is the first time that she's ever acting you you look at for her filmography hawkeye that's, that's it. amazing that's amazing I, i'm even more excited to watch the third episode i'm really excited for all of this then yeah you i'm telling you the third episode is really really an incredible episode probably one of the best i've seen from you know the uh the tv shows in in quite a while and stuff um I'm, it's funny I'm, how often we're saying that we I watch know, <laughs> Loki and it's like, oh, this is the best episode just, so far on anything. Saying, we're saying it's higher, yeah, you know, yeah. with each one of these things. Yeah. Um, I, I think also the thing that really, really excites me is the backstory of Echo and who she's attached to. Yo. Um, because that is inc- that is amazing. Know. And and in the third episode, there is a quick shot of who that person might be. We only see a hand, but oh, damn it, if I'm not excited, if okay. that's that's who it is, because they keep referencing the uncle. Okay, oh tell me, gosh. tell me, tell me, just so that I can debunk this right now, it's not Kingpin, right? 
It is Kingpin. God yes, damn it! it is. No way. No. It is no Kingpin. way. Let's in go. the comic books. I mean, in it actually books. makes sense because he, if you're in New York and you're talking about high, oh my goodness, crime, there's only one guy you can really be talking about, and that was the scene. And I, I hate to spoil it for you, Gabe, but now you can actually look for it and, and know exactly what it is. There is a scene where they flash back to her, and they're oh talking my about the uncle, and somebody puts her, his hand on her shoulder somebody wearing a suit somebody with a huge mitt of a hand and there it is so vincent d'onofrio if you're out there and you're listening i hope that you are in this show because well that is he is he not credited then is that he's not on IMDb not, I, that's no? the first thing that i did when when i saw the scene i went on and i checked. oh my god oh my god there. daredevil so, please bring daredevil oh my goodness <laughs> but this oh my this, goodness I, there's been a lot of chatter lately on on you know twitter and stuff like that talking about vincent diafrio coming back as kingpin i wonder if there's some truth to that and like i said knowing echo's background and seeing that scene play out and then continually them talking about the uncle come on we could put two yeah, this, mean, is, yeah. this is this is this is not like a, a mephisto thing where we're trying to connect really really random yeah. dots. Yeah, this is kind of really on the point here so you know well that's really exciting that that's insanely exciting i can't wait for that 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 sounds amazing and again oh this, man this, i can't this wait could be, this could be a red herring right Please don't let it be. Please don't let it be a uh, a WandaVision situation. You I know. know. <laughs> oh God, that but, sucks. But I I nearly fell out of my chair when I saw that, and I was like, Oh, please, 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 Kevin Feige, make this happen. Yes. We need to see Kevin. Uh, we need to see Kingpin in this universe here. I mean, I would say that like probably. And yeah. Yeah, I, I would say that Daredevil is probably the one thing that people are pining for the most, you know, as far as like, uh, you know, shows go like like every time like every, every time a show comes out, it's instantly like right when the show ends, when when Captain America ended, it was like, all right, bring Daredevil when when WandaVision came, ended it's like, are we going to see Daredevil? Like, you know, you just see all this chatter. People want this back because honestly, mm -hmm. I couldn't. I can't see another kingpin. Like, there's not a soul oh, in this yeah, world that yeah. can play kingpin again. So he he did it so well, and you know, with with him, it it was always the calmness, but there was always that rage that that kind of bubbled underneath the surface. And with the way that he portrayed kingpin, it was just this. He was literally a bomb just ticking, waiting to happen. And he always kept it right underneath the surface. But when it came out, dude was terrifying, which is the way Kingpin really should be, right? For sure, bro. So what do you guys think? I, I, I happen to think the reveal of Kingpin will probably happen at the last episode and the last minute or maybe like an end credits. And he'll be like gonna be. coming up for a season two of Hawkeye. <laughs> It's well, I think that if anything, last second. <laughs> I think if anything, if they're going to tease Echo's own show, then they I would say that they probably they probably won't show uh, Vincent D'Onofrio completely. I would I imagine because, because his back. Well, his because the thing, the thing, because here's the thing, right? Like if you show Vincent D'Onofrio, then you're also spoiling that Daredevil's coming back. You can't have. Kingpin without Daredevil, you just can't. Yeah. You know what I mean? Is this so, gonna be, is this going to be a situation what quite like um, the Eternals, where uh, the the end credit scene? You've seen the Eternals, right? Yeah, yeah, I saw, I saw. Yep. So yep. the the end credit scene where he's uh, where you have the Black Knight looking at the the sword. Yeah, yeah. Like, you hear Marsha, Marsha. I can never Mah say Ma Marshal Ali. You hear his Mahershala, voice, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> is that going to be how we're doing this? With Kingpin, I think so. I think so. Uh, but if it's if 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 Vincent D'Onofrio is confirmed, then they pretty much confirm that Daredevil's coming back. Yeah, you know, I so um, I don't think that they're going to spoil Kingpin completely. You know, I think that they're gonna, maybe they'll show his back, but they won't show who it is. Uh, so this way, there's always still there's always still the, the the idea like all right did they did they did they get a new kingpin vincent d'onofrio can go on twitter like oh that's not my hand you know like kind of play that game you know? yeah like but um, if they I'm confirm just, it 
Yeah. Oh, sorry. Go, go on. No, 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 no. Please, oh. please. So what I'm thinking is like, I don't know, maybe some goon goes to like the Chrysler building or something. And then you see he's like talking at like this chair that's turned around and looking out the window. I, you know and what? Then I, you know what when I, it turns around, you the 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 shot's only going to focus on like a hand on the on like the the armrest, and it's going to be the white suit. Yeah, yeah. You know, I see something you know, like that. That's how I can imagine that. You know what I always envision also, um, and and I know this is kind of contentious for some people with Ben Affleck's Daredevil, but that scene where Michael Clark Duncan is in his offense and he's just staring out in the window you see him in the you see just the back of him and stuff like that. yeah that's exactly yeah yeah that's how i see it that's how i see it that, that i like the ben affleck daredevil by the way have you seen, have you seen the extended the extended oh absolutely version? that was so much better version. so oh, good absolutely uh, for yeah. every for anyone that that i you know when we talk about daredevil and stuff like that i always tell them you know what the first the theatrical release is kind of wonky. I have to admit that, right? But if you watch the the what is it? The director's cut, the extended the director's cut. Yeah, it is a completely cut. yeah. Different it's a different movie. movie, different feel to the movie. It it is much truer to Daredevil, um, and the issues that he faces and stuff. Yep. So uh, I highly recommend that everybody goes. I, I would just and I just that. wish yeah. that they had released that theatrically, you know, because yeah. But the thing is, the climate was different than the yeah. the uh, the the belief and love of comic book movies wasn't there. You know, so like now, like I think that there's more creative license because of how successful Marvel has been. So now it's like, all right, well, no, 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 you guys can do everything that you guys want. We trust you. Back then, they didn't have that trust, which is why, like, we had like, like an X Men. We don't have like the best costumes because you know executives get in the way and they're like, no, 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 we don't think that this is gonna work, you know, or we don't think this storyline's gonna work, or we don't think we need to make it more realistic. That is very true. Mm. Um, But yeah, anyway. so I think I think everyone here is even Eli's sort of. I would hope that Eli is at least excited to finish the show. Yeah, only because of Kingpin. Only because of Kingpin. All right, all right. I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll yeah. take it. Yeah. So that we're all excited. Yes. Yeah. So we're all excited. We're all excited. Yeah. I really can't wait for you to see the third episode. I re- I really want to s- get your thoughts on on how that is. It, it is <laughs> such a good episode. Yeah, I'm gonna check it out as soon as I can. Uh, I got a, a day of uh, Spider-Man marathoning today to catch up before uh, No Way Home. But um, yeah, before we move on to the next topic of discussion, just taking a quick little break to remind you guys to like, rate, share, and subscribe. Please go on Instagram, Twitter, everywhere else that we're on, um, and you know, give us a rating, give us some feedback, share uh, this episode or any episode that you love uh, with some friends and family. Just, you know, give us a, a little bit of that love. Um, and we appreciate you guys. So that being said, I am now going into the Sarlacc pit and allowing allowing you guys to discuss uh, Book of Boba Fett. We have when we have what, a couple weeks, two weeks. Yeah, it's yeah. Two the, weeks before yeah. the release. So Is it that we got, quick? I didn't even realize that. Yeah, I think. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. So, so Book of Boba Fett, something that all Fett clan members and fans have been like pining for since, since, since that fateful day, um, where he fell into the Sarlacc pit, and not by his own accord. <laughs> like a punk. But but he has risen. <laughs> he has risen. He, the the, the, yes, the king yes. has returned. And by king, this is the Star Wars version of the Underworld Kingpin. Okay, and this is what it seems like the Book of Boba Fett will be um, uh, giving us. It's the underbelly, right? Like that's their whole thing, right? Like every every Emphasis every. On world, I will. I will continue. I will continue to take it. I will continue to take it because because at least Boba Fett's alive to take it. At least he can stand up on his two feet and take it like a man. Okay. Anyway, uh, after having that Yo. daily dose of Pepto Bismol every morning, right? Mm-hmm. Like at least man, he can. Is, right? 
At least he has a stomach to do it. So anyway, let's let's stop the bashing because it's supposed to be uh, like you know, talking about how good Book of Boba Fett is going to be. Positivity, right? Positivity. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. No okay. force sensitive children this time. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Seriously, who is anybody here excited about Book of Boba Fett? I'm excited because it looks like it will actually focus on what it's meant to be focused on. Boba, Boba Fett's Fett. not gonna take. Boba Fett's not gonna be a softy and like taking a uh, a force sensitive kid and like make that the story. No, he's gonna actually do not. what he sets out to do as like someone who's up and coming in the world of like smuggling and bounty hunters <laughs> and whatnot. It's a good thing Darth Maul is dead because uh, he probably have something to say about it because he's the original OG. He's the original gangster. He's the original kingpin. Oh, there yeah, you go. Oh, come not on. There you go. Are you freaking serious? Gonna lie. Are you freaking serious? I'm going to lie. No, that's true. true. If you watch the show. He is not show, the original OG. If you watch the he show. He actually is. Come now. There's a and power not vacuum. Show, not even the shows. Uh, Rogue One, too. There you go. Crimson oh, Dawn. You have evidence. Boom. Okay. And you may continue. <laughs> and? You and? Continue. Both that was already the, the beast in the galaxy. Debated. Was he not? Did he not at that point by Rogue Run from Rogue One? Did he not already have legendary status? Mm. Uh, 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 technically, uh, excuse he me. Would have mm. technically he would have not would have did have as a would. bounty hunter. Okay, not as a gangster, still a legend. He was still a legend. No. Still legendary who status. Was pay, who was paying those checks? It you know what? You know that I was gonna say. You know what's oh, actually more? Oh, oh, no, was more yeah. probably, oh, let's put it that way. Probably hired Boba Fett. There you go. <laughs> because of his legendary status. Come on, you guys have to. You guys cannot. You cannot say that Boba Fett was not already a legend. What is wrong Ooh, with y'all? Regardless. He was his boss. That so no, no, no. Both, say. both fat bounty hunters do not have bosses. They have they partners. Paid. They have paid, partners. Right? Just like Darth Vader was his partner in that. Okay. Mm, so no, anyway, that. let's 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 get away from the Boba Fett hate. Yeah, if they were okay. partners, he wouldn't be taking. He wouldn't be cashing those checks, man. Please, oh my <laughs> goodness! That's, that's all I'm saying. Oh my that's goodness! All I'm saying. Oh, oh my goodness! God. Anyway, let's talk about the show, <sighs> which is thanks to the fact that Darth Maul is dead, <laughs> <laughs> because he couldn't make it. He couldn't hack it in this life, huh? Hmm? Oh God! <laughs> no, he, you know what? He he got a little twisted with his revenge aspect. Yeah, you know? no, he couldn't. He, he couldn't. He couldn't. You know, that. He no couldn't doubt. defeat his uh, Jedi nemesis. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, unlike yeah. Boba Fett. Hmm. Okay. Boba Fett didn't win against no yeah. Jedi. Get out of here. No, no, no. Uh, 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 oh, I'm sorry, not a Jedi, but just against Darth Vader, twice. Yeah, but couldn't couldn't True. beat Han Solo, a blind Han Solo. So, <sighs> <sighs> I listen, I, I hate. Listen, all all kidding aside. Um, Boba Fett is a dope character. The fact that he got punked by Han Solo is something that's unforgivable and stuff, you know? Yeah, but that's not on him. That's not on him. Blame that that on Hollywood. Uh, Listen, it happened, though. So... (laughs) It is. I candy, mean, right? and, and and he's and he's back alive and in control of the underworld. So I, it I is do candy. like I All do right, like the so. fact I do like the fact that it seems like this show is going to actually finally talk about the elephant in the room. How did he get out of the Sarlacc? Yeah, and thank I, I think, God. I think they're they're kind of dropping little hints here that they're going to be talking about it. You see it in the trailers. <laughs> so that's something that is really fascinating because I do want to hear that story. You know, we do have the story in the comic books, but I want to see it fleshed out on TV, on the screen. You know what I'm saying? So that that's something to be excited for, you know, in terms of the show coming up. Is anyone here worried that they are going to have some sort of like a uh, force sensitive child introduction that no, they're going? I'm not. You're not worried at all. I am. They can't. I am. <laughs> it they can't show that trailer and then not do it. Yeah, I, I think I think the way the focus of the show lends itself to not seeing that especially well, let me ask you this scene, you let know? me ask you this did anybody have any kind of inkling about anything grogu or baby yoda related when we were waiting for the mandalorian season one 
I think that's more of a marketing ploy, though. Also, they they kept that really close to the vest and stuff. Um, and and granted, with the Mandalorian, did I don't think they showed that much in terms of of they didn't show Baby Yoda at all until right, he was exactly. revealed for the reveal. So we don't know. Like it's it's possible that they can. There, I I don't know, man. I, I I've been a little yeah. bit burned by the Mandalorian, you know, yeah, uh, as much as I love it. You know, but I think like we all kind of agree that like that second season really shouldn't have been about the 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 you know chasing after Baby Yoda and kind of rehashing a lot of stuff that we dealt with in the first season already. So yeah. I'm a little worried that they're gonna kind of uh, get there and turn it into a you know mission or monster of the week kind of show, I just because that. that seems like what they've been doing with every single Star Wars property since. Like I said, the, the the one thing that that gives me hope is that it does look like from everything that we've seen in the trailer, like you said, trailers can be very misleading, but it does look like they're going to be focusing most mostly on Boba Fett and his rise in the criminal criminal empire. Yeah, you know, yeah. and um, if that's the case, just like AJ said, it it seems a little difficult to kind of shoehorn the the baby the baby yoda of this series and in, in, in whatnot um and if they do i i'm gonna tell you i'm gonna be super disappointed if that if well that happens, here's you know. here's here's the reason that i feel like uh it's possible and even likely um there's really no reason to have had beta in the bad batch if you're not trying to introduce beta to then bring her bring beta up to up to up to the present day so i feel like boba fett the book of boba fett could now bring beta and, and like reunite beta and alpha into the uh oh you mean you know, omega omega sorry omega i knew that that's yeah sorry uh omega bring bring omega and Alpha and Omega in uh, to the present day, so that is where I'm worried. I'm worried that like the whole reason they introduced Omega is to then bring it full circle with Book of Boba Fett. Wow, that is actually a distinct possibility because then she's going to be older at that point. <laughs> yeah, there's 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 absolutely no reason to introduce that as a character if you're not meant to now give her as a, a, a actual role. You know, I, in the future of the say, Star Wars, I would say leave her in the animated universe. I, I don't need to see, I don't need to see her in in live action and whatnot. So uh, and you would be I'm disappointed trying, if that was the case. I would, I would, because again, I Boba Fett to me, he he, this the way the show is being framed fits his character perfectly. You know, yeah, absolutely. I, I don't, I don't see him as a Mandalorian type. You know that that just it doesn't. Sure, Jin, he doesn't seem like a Jin Jaren to me. You know, okay, and, and so. But we're not talking about Jin Jaren. I mean, we're talking about Kathleen Kennedy. Yeah, I know. But, you know, <laughs> but I mean, even in the Mandalorian too, you could see that his his niceties had a limit. <laughs> Like, yeah. hey, I'm gonna help you get onto that ship. Okay, bye. Yeah, yeah, no, I just mean, I just mean like a whole like marketing thing, you know. Like my, I, I'm really worried about like this whole like Omega angle, and 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 you know, because I just, I just keep thinking, I, I never finished Bad Batch. You guys finished it, right? You did. Yeah. I never finished it because I was really, it's, it's such a chore to, to, to watch it for me, and I literally only have one episode left. But I have like I, I have no attachment. Anything. I have no attachment to Omega whatsoever, and I keep thinking about like that show. And you know, for me, like I don't have a problem with Omega's a, as a character at all. I just didn't feel. I I just didn't see why Omega had to be in the Bad Batch show at all. And it just clicked with me that like the only reason would be if you're trying to bring Omega to the current present day star wars universe yeah i think that's one of the disappointing things of bad batch is that i had in my mind a totally different take of how that show should have gone and then you know and the first episode was was kind of like a a you know an eye opener and stuff and then 
they did a 180 degree turn and it became this other show where we've seen it already a bunch of times yeah you know? yeah and, and it's just and if they do like i said if they do this with it, the, the way i look at it is like this <clears throat> if you turn if you go ahead and turn and change the character of boba fett like that 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 pretty much is a slap of the face in, in for all boba fett fans out there at least that's my opinion because that is so not like what we have seen from the character of boba fett so far yeah that that is a, a total departure of who he is who he is is what they're showing in the in the trailer he's a badass he's he you know he's he's focused now on not just doing bounty hunting but kind of taking that pound of flesh for himself and saying you know what i'm a gangster this is this is who i am that makes sense for the character him toting around the universe with a kid in tow does not make any sense for me. Well, the thing is that it wouldn't be a kid. Well, right? yeah, but you know, yeah, my, my thing, my thing is, I, I, I don't, I'm, not, well, I'm not saying, I'm not, I'm not saying that I think that like it's gonna be like Omega and then like Boba Fett, you know, kind of trying to like take Omega by the reins, but just using Omega in the show, like making the show about Alpha and Omega and not making it Boba Fett. Listen, Eli, I, I want to hear I from Eli a- too. Yeah, I'll just say one more thing. I need my my Star Wars Goodfellas right here, and this is the show that. Yes. Oh play. man, that's a good way to put it. Yeah, the Star Wars Goodfellas. Yeah, yeah. Be like, yeah, bro. I mean, like the trailer is like it's so different from what we usually get from the Star Wars universe. It really feels like it's all about you know like, um, it reminds me of like you know, I don't know what it reminds me of. I don't know why I said that, but but the whole point is it's like it seems like so dramatic and like. He's like building an empire for himself, and that's so sick. You know what I expect to see? Well, at least I hope he's, to see. He's I don't the, expect. He's the. He's the. He's kind of reminds me of Daredevil in a way, but yeah. from like the kingpin side. That's of what things. I'm saying. It's Boba. Like, oh, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Sick. Boba Escobar. Boba Escobar. Oh, <laughs> yes. I like that. Yeah, I like that. I like that. I like that. We can never get these cool ass names with all. <laughs> Oh, uh, so hey, so uh, uh, would you be? Ah, uh, no, 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 no. We started the episode with a ten-minute rant against Boba. So don't give me that. All right, <laughs> all right, all right. I'll give you a pass. Eli, 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 would you be disappointed if 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 Omega makes an appear, even just an appearance in the show? They, they wouldn't. They wouldn't. They would. But would not. you be disappointed? Of course, hell, hell yeah. No, I wouldn't. No, I, I personally, hate her. She is annoying. Yes, she's yeah, yeah. I mean, I I wouldn't I wouldn't be disappointed. I just don't want it to be that. I want I don't want to get the red herring be. be I don't want the book of Boba Fett or Boba Escobar to be the red herring that actually gives us the book of Alpha and Omega. That you would know? be absolutely disappointing. But uh, I'll, I'll, accept, say, yeah. I'll accept Omega showing up in the thing in the in the show and then getting killed in the crossfire. You know, oh my goodness! Dang. <laughs> that's that's dark, a that's right? a that's dark. That's, that's dark. dark right? but then again, yeah, yeah. Yo, you know what'd be sick? What? You know what? Never mind. That doesn't make sense. That would be sick. No, 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 no. no so like, sick. No, no, no. But, so but, sick. But, sick like the flu. <laughs> oh my gosh! You know, but like with like the rise of Mandalorians and stuff like that. Like I'm thinking, maybe they could do Maul's acolytes. What? I don't know. I don't. You know. Well, like remnants know. of the Crimson Dawn, yeah, but they're like sick. long gone from now. Well, from that would now. be sick, though. Let, let's let me since you put that out there. Um, we <laughs> how how does the Dark Saber's reappearance in this yeah. universe kind of affect the Book of Boba? That's what I'm saying. Are or does it affect that? it at all? That's another thing. How Jin was the one who had that last, or yep. Din? Did he kill him? <laughs> what? <laughs> So I want to know if Maul's acolytes are coming back or not, because it could possibly be a. They thing. don't care about the dark saber. No, I think they might still do uh, care. I don't. I don't know. I don't know for sure. And but like, let's put it this way. Then again, you know the armor. Bob is not Mandalorian anyway, so. Yeah, but. Yeah, that's. Oh right. my goodness! Right. Come that's on. Right. Come on! I, I would do a mic drop here, but I, I don't want to hurt the the listeners' ears right now. So. <laughs> oh, my oh my goodness. Dave Filoni himself (laughs) has already cleared this up that you don't have to be Mandalorian to be Mandalorian. That is a creed. And, 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 and 
through what's it called through Boba's like uh, code and everything, we show that like they that he became that his, that uh, that Jango Fett became Mandalorian, thus making him Mandalorian. Right. He's a foundling. I don't know. Eh, eh, come on, guys! You eh. guys got you, you, you guys can hate on Boba Fett all you want, but you can't dispute facts. I know. Mm-hmm. So, the Dark Saber does does that impact the show at, at any point in time? Yeah, I think so because I think that like the Dark Saber is uh, the Star Wars universe's, or at least the TV universe. I think it's the uh, the Star Wars universe's Infinity Stones. You know where the, the you know it's it's the one thing that kind of. Uh, that makes an appearance everywhere, you know, w- within this realm, you know, and I think that like that's where we can see, you know, Omega, you know, maybe Omega wants a dark saber. I don't know, man. I'm really worried about Omega yeah, and, and how they, they might use her. That, right? so, I don't <laughs> want it, but I just, want, I just, I just want to be prepared because I was not prepared for. Um, oh. I was not prepared for that in beta. In beta, oh, oh my god, in um, oh Bad god. Batch. You know what would be Dude, awesome? He's standing over ha- Boba Fett's body with the dark saber in hand. <laughs> no, no. And and mentally that will never like, happen. Reaching reaching out to her. That will never happen. That will never happen. <laughs> I, I, that would be how, how about how Yo. about the only way I would like to see oh, Omega in the show no. is if there's a a fight between Boba Fett and either Bo Katana or Din, and she gets struck accidentally by the black the dark saber. Hey. That would be sick, bro. Oh my that god, would be, I really want to kill her look, off. I, I, look, I, she I, was found by a stray I, energy blast. I'm finding new ways to kill her off, you know what I'm saying? Listen, I have, I have, I don't have a problem with, with Omega as a character. I think that we should be introducing characters um, often enough to expand the universe and so on and so forth. I just want it done the right way, you know? And they didn't even flesh story. her out in that show. I know, that's why I'm worried they, that they're going to try to flesh her out. They that's not where they're going to try to flesh her out in this one. So yeah, they were hinting in the show that she was like there was something special about this clone, but they never actually went into yeah, it. Yeah, her her special power is annoying the crap out of everybody, especially me. <sighs> That's no, power. I mean her thing. You know, I think that like the reason she's so annoying to a lot of people is that again, when it comes to Bad Batch, it's not what they what anybody expected Bad Batch to be. So it's like it's like if you're if 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 you're going to if you're going to like uh, hang out with your friends, uh, and I'm, I mean I don't want to you know kind of upset anybody out there, but let's say I want to go hang out with the boys, but then one of the guys brings his girlfriend, you know I don't have a problem with the girlfriend, but it kind of changes the reason I came to hang out. So if I wanted to watch Bad Batch and then they bring Omega, it's like, ah, this isn't what I came here for. So I don't think that Omega is a bad character. I don't think that Omega has a bad storyline. I just don't want her. That's not what I want. Like when I want like everybody that wanted Bad Batch was waiting for Bad Batch. Give me just Bad Batch. Everybody that's watching Book of Boba Fett has been waiting for Boba Fett for decades. Don't give me anything but Boba Fett. After I have my healthy plate of Boba Fett and then some, then maybe season two we can deal with Omega and all that other stuff. You know what I mean? You, you know what would be a great way to introduce Omega? Have her walking across the street and Fennec Shan is about to assassinate somebody with oh my rifle God. and she just happens to walk in front uh, of the shot as she's taking Stop trying to, I'm not. Oh my God. Uh, saying. We're not trying okay, to, so, we're not trying to kill her. <laughs> <laughs> well, somebody to trying to agree wrong. with Gabe yes, here. Let me, let me okay. So <laughs> let me let me ask this one question because this was this was a especially in the second season, this was a real big gripe that we all had in terms of the Mandalorian. Um, are you afraid that the book of Boba Fett is going to be the book of someone else? Because we again, that's the thing. That's see. what I feel like. That's why I'm afraid of it being the book of Omega or the yeah. book of Alpha and Omega. That's that's what I'm saying. Like I don't want this to be the book of Alpha and Omega. I want it to be just the book of Boba. You yeah. know, I want. I do not want them to switch yeah, the story. Like for example, the Mandalorian wasn't about the Mandalorians or the Mandalorians in general or Mandalorian. Actually, it's, that's it's, season. Yeah, it's literally the entire both seasons. The whole show is about like, hey, here's this foundling inside with, with some Mandalorian lore, but this show is really about Grogu. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, because he, who did who, he, like what my character in his own show. Yeah, like like who did we cry for? We cried for, for Grogu when he was taken away. You know? I, I had a tear when uh when he had uh when he took off his helmet. 
You know what I'm saying? I mean, there was an emotional moment there. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, it's, you know, but like, but still, like the show was, the show is about Grogu, not Mandalorian, not Din, which kind of sucks. And that's what I don't want the book of both. Just like the Bad Batch wasn't a show about the Bad Batch. It was about Omega. And I don't want this to happen to Boba. Another another good way to introduce Omega is her just happening to stumble along Grogu's training and he accidentally force chokes her. It's a good way. Oh, How do you right. accidentally you know what? force choke someone? God, what? God, <laughs> you know. Nah, you know what would be kind of cool He's if I'm going to jump on this bandwagon? If I'm going to jump on this child. bandwagon, <laughs> if I'm going to jump on this bandwagon, it would be kind of cool to truly come full circle and just like dump Omega in a Sarlacc. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> this has become this has become the podcast of ways to kill Omega. You know, a thousand ways, ways a thousand, to a, die. Yeah, a thousand Omega to die. <laughs> <laughs> the Omega of deaths. <laughs> yes. Oh, um. Man. All right. Uh, so okay. anyway, is there any 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 We're any other thoughts on here. Book of Boba? I. I mean, again, I'm sorry that I brought that up. I feel like the moment that I brought that up, I feel like I can sense in the room that like everyone just had a collective like, "Oh my God, no!" <laughs> you know? No, like I said, we're we're just we're just poking fun really at your fandom and stuff like that. But generally, for me, I am excited to watch Bo- the book of Boba Fett. I just like I said. I have my misgivings, especially with everything that you've been saying lately with the Omega thing and. I, I I really really do hope that they make the common sense decision to actually focus on Boba Fett's story. It's freaking called the but the book of Boba Fett for a reason. Please focus on his story because his story is interesting. Like I said, I do want to know how he got out of the star. Like I'm excited to see him grow into this, you know, big Star Wars kingpin. I I want to see Goodfellas in the Star Wars universe. I, that, to me, is genuinely exciting. Just don't enough it up, please. Really. <laughs> That's all yeah, I'm saying. Yeah. You know? I, I feel the same way. I'm uh, Again, I'm, I'm worried. Uh, I feel... You know what? You know what I feel? I feel like... We have PTSD from season two of The Mandalorian. <laughs> well, I, well, 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 think about both fans. Both fans have PTSD from Boba. You know what I mean? Yeah, so it's yeah. like so it's like it's like when you know everybody went to go see Empire Strikes Back. At least the Boba Fett fans went to see Empire Strikes Back to see Boba be badass, and then they get the Sarlacc pit debacle, mm-hmm. and then everybody sees the Mandalorian to see the Mandalorians be badass, and not that it's a debacle, but we kind of get the bait and switch. Everybody goes to see the Bad Batch for the Bad Batch to be badass, and we get that bait and switch. And it's like yeah. it's like it's it's almost like kind of perpetually reliving the the fall to the star like pit in a way and i just i i kind of don't want that anymore you know just give us what we want please yeah that's, um, that's what we're asking for you know any anyone else have any final thoughts I don't think I, i'm just i'm curious where star wars goes after the book of boba fett that's that's me because you know we we, we have a lot of shows coming we do but at the same time and Correct me if if you feel the same way. I don't have a lot of excitement for Star Wars at this point, you know. Like, yeah, I I, I don't know what the re- usually I'm a big Star Wars nerd, right? Um, and Andor is is interesting. Obi Wan I I think is probably the one that I'm looking forward <laughs> yes. to the most and stuff. Yeah, heard yeah. that they they've canceled Rangers of the Republic. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean that we, we we should we should possibly maybe talk about like that the reasons for it the overall Star Wars universe at a, some point in the future. Yeah, yeah, as far definitely. as like where's it? It doesn't feel like there's really a direction to be honest with you. There it isn't. just feels I mean, like they I feel like they're throwing spaghetti at the wall with all these shows. It's exactly. like let's see which one sticks. Let's see which one sticks. And, and 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 it's not even that. What what is the main thing about Star Wars? It's the films, and we haven't heard anything except yeah, for mean, oh well they're coming you know there's no excitement on that front right now so yeah, i don't know it, it's, i don't know it's a little weird for us but yeah i think we you know in a in another episode we could have a bigger discussion about star wars and yeah. and where it's going because well that might be a short episode because it doesn't seem like it's going anywhere right now well i mean we, except we, for the show you know 
the show. We do need to kind of do like uh maybe after Book of Boba Fett. Let's let's revisit this after the uh after we get Book of Boba Fett and the the, the show ends. Mm-hmm. Um, it's only seven episodes. Is it? I, I, I think honestly, I think it's short. I, really I think it's short, seven eight episodes, something like that. So okay. it wouldn't take long. That kind of uh, makes sense. Yeah. Uh, and let's see, let's see where we are after everything that's been revealed at Book of Boba Fett, because from there we can maybe kind of see like, is there any kind of direction with all these other shows that are coming or not? So right now it doesn't feel like it, you know, it there's does no, there's no overarching thread, you know? Um, so, you know, yeah. Know. Yeah. All right. So I think that's going to do it for us. Uh, I want to make sure that, uh, we end this before, you know, we, Fall back into a uh, Maul versus Fett again campaign. Um, don't or, speak. Don't say anything. No, no, stop it. Oh man, stop it. Walks stop it. Stop into it. a bar. It- <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> and she accidentally spills a shadow trooper's drink. Oh. <laughs> Blue milk. Blue milk. <laughs> Blue milk. <laughs> When the trooper goes to take the shot, he misses, obviously. But this pisses off a, a much older version of Bosk. Do we? Bosk shoots them both up. <laughs> do, do, do we get a, a a version of a baby rancor anywhere in this place? Oh, well, that's what they feed the bodies to. <laughs> Guys, thank you guys so much for listening. Hope you guys enjoyed the cast. Please rate, like, share, and subscribe. And as always, stay geeky.